Previously, you just kind of accidentally stumbled almost into this room with these goblins uh, that were pretty much ready for you, given the fact that they had sprung these flood traps on you. Um, you kind of bull rushed in. Sergey threw around some insults um, to <laughs> uh, uh, disorientate, shall we say, the goblins. Um, Thoric, Johan, you rushed in, did a little bit of smashing and stabbing to varied degrees of success, with Saga following in close behind, botching her first crossbow shot. Um, but Sergey and Saga, you chased after a goblin who had attempted to flee the scene um, into a secondary room, while Thoric and Johan dealt with one final goblin who sadly got away. Which brings us to where we are now, so let's get into it. I'm just going to describe the room that you're in again, just for clarity's sake. So you are essentially in a uh, room which has got sacks and crates of looted provisions piled up at the south end. To the west, the floor slopes down towards this narrow opening that descends deep into the darkness. And to the north are the natural stone steps from which you came from, with the roar of the falling water echoing from beyond. And in the middle of this cavern, there are the coals of a large fire uh, just smouldering. Is there anything that you would like to do? Can Saga look for any crossbow bolts? Because she needs a... Uh, oh, oh. What, in amongst all of the crates and mm. things? Yeah, uh, if there's any in the crates, brilliant. If there's any just lying around that can be reused. Uh, sure. Do you want to give me a perception? No, let's go. Well, perception or investigate, depending on how, how much you want to rummage around, I suppose. Can I do investigation? Yeah, so plenty of rummaging. That's a 16. Okay. So uh, you head on over to, you kind of look around on the floor at first and then you head on over to um, some of the crates. And as you um, peer into one of the crates, you, you do notice on the side of it that there is a, a symbol of a blue lion motif. Um, but also you notice Hiding behind one of the crates is a goblin ready to strike at you. So I need initiative rolls, please. Ah! <laughs> okay. My God. They're Are you kidding me? <laughs> 18. 18 for Johan. Uh, 13 for Sergei. 13 for Sergei. 18 for Thoric. 18 for Thoric. He caught me off guard. Six. Ooh, <laughs> he really did catch you off guard. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's bloody goblins. <laughs> They're really sneaky buggers, yeah. goblins. Easily underestimated, I find. Mm. Okay, interesting. I think I lost one of my dice earlier. Oh no, I found it. Phew. Uh, right, okay. Uh, so, um, 
So, Johan. Oh, in fact, Johan and Thoric, I think you're at the same, aren't you? Both 18, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, who's got the higher decks? I imagine it's Johan. It's uh, definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So, Johan, uh, you are up first. Uh, you've seen uh, Saga go over to look at some of the crates and kind of quickly kind of you see her flinch. Um, so you suspect that there's definitely something behind there. Is there anything that you'd like to do? So I don't know that there's something there. Uh, n well, not really at this point, no, because nobody's actually attacked yet. But you can certainly see from their reaction that there's something shocking over there. So as far as I'm aware, she's just seen a spider or something. <laughs> <laughs> do with that do with that information what you'd like, <laughs> I suppose. Um, nah, I'll take it seriously. I draw weapons. And okay. what am I want to do? So, what is Saga looking at? Like a big pile of stuff that this goblin yeah, is. Yeah, just in. loads of crates and barrels and sacks and things. Hmm. Just kind of lining up the back wall. I'm tempted to just throw my torch at it. Just light it up. Okay. Sure. Will it burn? Uh, it certainly has the potential to burn, yes. Will it blow up? <laughs> that would depend on the contents of the crates. Next to Saga? Are you going to blow me up? <laughs> Thinks better of it. <laughs> okay, I draw my rapier. Mm -hmm. And go behind Saga but in a manner that makes that doesn't make her think that I'm hiding. I'm strategically doing this, but also like behind and to, to the right mm -hmm. in an attempt to try and sneak, wait for whatever is in there to reveal itself, then I can sneaky, 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 and then <coughs> stab, stab. Okay. Um, okay. Not much of a plan, but it's what I'm doing. So you're heading over to the crates, is that right? I uh, head towards Saga, yes. Okay. Behind her or just next to her? Behind. Behind, okay. You're gonna scare the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thoric, you are... I'm more like... <laughs> next. You're still actually in the room next door. Yeah. Um, because the goblin has literally just escaped down the stream. So you hear a little bit of commotion behind you, but not nothing particularly of no screaming or anything, but but maybe oh. a little bit of a. Well, still a knowing that there's stuff going on, I kind of look after the goblin and I'm just like, nah, shake my fist at it, <laughs> um, and I go trudging into the next room. Um, how far will one set of movement get me, and what will I see? Uh, you could get essentially into the middle of the room just about um to your right is um sergey and a kind of campfire that's kind of smoldering a little bit so it looks like it's been put out but quite recently um there are crates and things directly in front of you with uh, saga kind of looking over it with johan just behind her um, to your right, at the other end of the room, is where the stalag mites <laughs> are coming up from the ground, uh, with the hole leading uh, downwards. Um, so, do I get the I get the sense that they found something nasty behind this? Oh yeah, there's definitely a sense of people being at the. Now that Johan's really kind of drawn his okay. weapons, you certainly get the sense that there's something going down in this room. Um. But I can't see the goblin. Uh, not at this point, no. Mm. Of course, you are welcome to communicate with each other. <laughs> you can speak. <laughs> just it's very um, limited in what you can say, of course. Thoric just shouts, goblin? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, yes. Yep. <laughs> right. Um, and <laughs> Thoric will... so. There's like a pile of crates, and then I assume on the other side of that there is this goblin, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just can I just run into the crates and just like? 
just try to topple them on top of the goblin the, the other side. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, how are we going to do this? Uh, well, what, what's your intention? To hurt them or to kind of bury them? Just bury them in crates. Okay, sure. Uh, so I think we'll go for a... Um, we'll, we'll do it as an attack roll, because that's kind of the easiest okay. thing to do. So like a strength check, essentially. And if successful, uh, let's say that they're restrained, shall we? That's very reasonable. Okay. Um, so an attack roll. Uh, that is a 13. Okay, sure. I mean, it's it's just crates of things, and you've got a pretty good run-up from where you are. So, um, so yeah, so you, you dash into the room and just charge straight at these crates and just topple them over onto this goblin um, that's threatening Saga. Um, and he's just buried under these boxes and, and sacks and things. Uh, try jumping away. No, you wee Sassernak. <laughs> Sassernak? Again, again, again Thoric <laughs> smack talk is still, you know, it's getting there. Oh. <laughs> Love it. I want to just... get I want to get bona fide Sassernak as a T-shirt. Yes. Yes, that's an agony Ooh, to be a t-shirt. Outlander might have words. <laughs> oh, is it an Outlander, Outlander thing, is it? Is yeah, something? it's what he calls her. Ah, um. well then maybe not. <laughs> okay, uh, right. So that brings us then to a goblin who is currently buried under loads of sacks and things. Um, he's going to need really to make essentially a strength saving throw, I guess, of all things, um, to really see if he can get out from underneath all of this. Um, oh, but I mean, a 17, he kind of pushes it all off, but it takes him his action to get out and it takes his action to kind of get up as well. So he's he basically manages to get out from underneath it all and that's pretty much his, his turn gone. Um, so... Um, the other goblin behind the crates that you're not yet aware of um, leaps up and um, he s- jumps over these crates and heads for you, Saga, uh, and swings his scimitar at you. Uh, and that's going to be <laughs> 11 against your AC. There's no hit. So he, he just kind of leaps up and, and is almost in a frenzy, just kind of he's swinging his scimitar around aimlessly, just trying to hit anything, um, almost <laughs> feeling like he's cornered, it would seem. Uh, so, Sergey, that brings us to you. Um, okay, so having having seen this goblin leap out of the, the crates, I'm going to, again, cast Vicious Mockery and uh, kind of whisper into the goblin's head, well, that was really impressive. For a small, weak, and feeble goblin like yourself. Mind <laughs> uh, so games. That's going to be a uh, saving throw again, isn't it? Yeah, twelve is the one to beat. Okay. Uh, and it's wisdom, isn't it? Yes. Uh, which I presume is not very high. No, it is not. Um, so much as before, um, this uh, goblin seems to take very serious offence to what it is that you've just said to him um, and, and it really discombobulates his mind for a brief moment uh, okay. okay anything else you'd like to do was that uh, yeah was that a success it was a success yes oh he takes damage okay did he? you roll yeah do you want me to roll it or you roll oh it? yeah you go for it three points of damage and he has disadvantage on its next uh, next goal three exactly. points yeah yeah. And just to be clear, which goblin was this? Was this the one underneath? The one that's the... just leapt out from under the crate. The okay. one that's uh, was pressed down from the crate that's now popped back up. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, could I, as a bonus action, maybe do a perception, if you'll allow it, just to kind of uh, see... Yeah, what are you looking for? That The little hole by the stalagmites. Yeah. I want to see if that's maybe there's any footsteps leading from there or anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah, give me a perception check then, please. Oh dear. <laughs> well, that's uh, eight. Okay. Um, as far as you can see, it's just a hole in the ground. Okay, never mind. In a hole in the ground. 
the ball in the wall. <laughs> a halfling. Um, <laughs> so, Saga. I'm going to be nice, and I'm not going to give you the surprised condition. Okay. Um, mainly because I think it's representative in your low initiative already. <laughs> so I'm going to be, yeah. I'm going to be kind. I'm feeling nice today. Oh. Um, so, uh, what would you like to do? I'm going to take my great sword and try and impale him. Which one? The. You've got there's, there's two. two gobl- yeah, there's two. Is so there? Where 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 the second one come from? So he was also buried in another part of the crates. Oh, he jumped out. Right. He was the one that attacked you. Okay. Saga. The other goblin used all of his action and his round to get up from out of the crates. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was the same one. Well, no, no. whichever... Sorry. The one closest to me... Uh, I mean, you're kind of engaged with both. The so one that got- scared... The one that jumped out at me. <laughs> the one that jumped out at you initially yeah. that started the whole thing off. Okay. Yes. Lovely. Well, he's just been uh, d- had a bit of damage done to him from Vicious Mockery anyway, so that's probably a good choice. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Great sword attack, which is a 23. 23 is certainly going to do yeah. some damage. Eat my great sword. <laughs> Six damage. Oh, how are you finishing him off? <laughs> just a goblin kebab. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> yummy. <laughs> nice. Okay, so you just skewered him completely. Yes. Um, and then oh. I'm gonna use my foot to scrape him off my sword. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. It's a nice bit of like friction yeah. on your blade as you kind of just yeah. kick him off the end. <laughs> oh. Okay, lovely. Ooh, Anything right. else you'd like to do? You've still got another goblin on you. I don't know if you've got anything else you can do. I can't do anything else. Okay. Level one. <laughs> um, so, Sergey, from the direction of the hole in the ground that you were just looking over, you see a wolf leap out at you and just jump at you, jaw open wide as it tries to take a chunk out of you. Sergi is going to scream in the highest pitch to in the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this is going to be... Ooh, 19 against your AC, sir. My AC is 11, of course it's it. Oh. Oh, I lost the dice. I lost the dice. Hang on. That's right, leave it. We'll move on. Um. Uh, that's going to be seven damage Ooh. to you. I'm almost dead. Um, <laughs> and oh, you need to succeed on a strength saving throw for me, please. Oh, God. What? Ten. <laughs> Ten. Oh, okay. So the, not only does this just take a chunk out of your arm um, but it, it it full on like pins you to the ground um, so you've been big knocked... doggy no please you are now knocked prone oh uh, please excuse me oh, whilst sh- I recover a dice <laughs> oh frig oh dear well I think I found something that smells worse than me no that one's been lost to the ether oh well <laughs> The dice gods have claimed it for their own. Okay. Um, I'm afraid, however, that is not the worst of it. Because from behind one of the stalagmites comes this very large goblin-esque creature, very hairy, big sharp teeth, (sighs) carrying a large morning star, and he just wades through the room, past Sergei, straight for you, Johan, and just like backhands you with this morning star. Oh. Uh, luckily for you, though, you see it coming and just managed to sidestep it. But that looked like quite the brutish hit, and that probably would have done a lot of damage to you had it hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this thing's got hide armor and a shield as well, so it's going to be quite hard to hit itself in reality. 
Uh, okay. That brings us then to the top of the round. Johan, you've got this big, scary, brutish goblinoid very much engaged with you in your face. What would you like to do? You have about five feet behind you to the back wall. Um, really, your choices of, of movement are to head towards the back wall, to head straight into this bugbear, or if you head to, head to your left, you're essentially engaging with the goblin that's engaged with Saga at this point. So you've really got nowhere to go beyond heading backwards towards this wall. My first thought is, I really shouldn't have left the city. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is it possible for me to make a dive at the wolf pinning Sergei to the ground? Not really. You'd have to get pa Well, you could. I mean, you could, but Clark will probably attempt to attack you if you did try to do that. Okay. Then here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I remember Sergei earlier made a pass through someone's legs. Mm -hmm. I mentally stored that for later use. And I attempt to employ that. How, I'm guessing this is the bugbear clog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... I can neither how... confirm nor deny. Because you just said his name. Oh, I did? Oh. Yes. Oh, I hate when I do that. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. I hate when I do that. It's well, then, yes. It's like one of those classic villains who's like, Claw! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly why. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like a Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, have a, I have time for a quip. Well, you must be Clark. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to attempt to slide through Clark's legs. Yep. And stab him in the groin. With Ooh. the knife, with the dagger, straight yep. upwards, and get behind him because I don't think it's wise for me to directly engage this dude. I feel like it's more of a job for one of the more warrior types sure. in the party. And what? yeah, my let's my... go. Let's go for an attack roll. Right here. If you succeed on the attack roll, I'll let you do an acrobatics check to see if you manage to get to the other side. This will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Is a 22. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, that'll do it. So let's do damage and then we'll work out the acrobatics after. It's not very much damage. Oh, can I also do a sneak attack? Uh, yes, you can because Sergey is right next to Clark, actually. I'm going right stab his nuts. Clark. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, so that's 1d4 plus 3 because it's a dagger. Yep. Plus a 1d6 for your sneak attack, I believe. It's a one. That's four base damage. Yeah. And with my sneak attack, that's two, so that's six damage. Nice. Okay. And now let's roll the acrobatics check to see if you manage to slide underneath his legs through the other side. Okay. That is a 16. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Um, so. Clark has done his backhanded attempt at hitting you. You um, slide underneath his legs, stab upwards, get him in the groin, um, and just continue to slide underneath, styling it out, making it look very cool indeed. And you jump up behind him with Sergei to your right and the unidentified bugbear creature <laughs> in front of you, in front of you. Cool. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, I don't suppose there's anything else left for you to do, is there? On that I. Turn? I also want to shout at the wolf to direct his attention at me. Okay. Sure. I say. Uh, hey, furry. <laughs> Sergey looks up like, yes, hello. <laughs> Thoric also <laughs> looks round. <laughs> <laughs> Thoric, you're up. Ah, uh, see, 
Mm. So, cl- this creature, this large creature, name unknown, um, looks Curtis pretty... doesn't have a collar that so we've says got, Clark we've got, on it. We've got not Clark, um, we've got a wolf, and we've got two goblins. Yeah. One, one goblin. Oh, yes, one goblin, because the other one's been Great. taken out. Yeah. I only have two spell slots, and I'm scared to use them. Um, I'm really scared to use them for reasons for reasons unknown that may or may not be connected with the fact that Sergi's prone and has a living armor class. Uh, but Doric doesn't know this. I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I mean, I, you've ju- you have just looked around in response to Hey Furry. So I think it's probably pretty clear to you that Sergei is underneath a wolf at this point. Okay. Um, so he's still under the wolf. He, at this point, yes. Well, he's well. He's not so much under the wolf as as kind of just prone. Okay. The force has kind of pushed him to the ground. Oh, uh, I don't know which is better to do. Can I? Can I run to either this large creature or the wolf? Am I within range to do that? Uh, you could run to this unknown large goblinoid um, without engaging with anybody, but to get to the wolf, you would have to leave somebody's threat space, which would invoke an attack of opportunity. Is that the goblin or the large person? Uh, it would depend on which way you went, really. You could kind of go round the goblin, or you could try and go round the larger goblinoid. Um, okay. Or you could you could just go straight for the larger one. I'm. Uh, I'm going to do what Thoric would do in that instance, which is deal with the large thing and try and help his friends to cut the head off the snake. So, sure. in a ring, in a ringing voice, um, mm-hmm. Thoric just holds out his uh, shield hand, palm forward, um, and the rings start to glow. Yeah. I'd like to cast command um, at oh. the large creature, and just shout in this kind of like ringing, deep voice. He just says, "Grovel." Um, so, if this succeeds, so it's a wisdom save DC fourteen. On not Clark's turn, he has to use his turn to fall prone and end his turn. Right. Okay. So that's a what saving? A wisdom? Wisdom DC 14. Ooh. You know what? I've never been on the receiving end of the command spell before. So this is exciting for me. Uh, right. Wisdom DC 14. Oh, a two. Goblins are not known for their uh, wisdom or goblinoids, for that matter. Uh, Okay, awesome. So he now has to use his next turn to to go prone. To go prone and uh, end his turn after that. Uh, Awesome. And I'm gonna I'm gonna run towards. I'm going to run towards the wolf. Try. I, I, I'm not quite certain in my head how this is going to work. If I can, like, basically get either in uh, base contact with the large person, if mm-hmm. that's all I can do, that's great. Sort of next well, to or... Yeah, I mean, you have enough movement to get to either the larger goblinoid or the wolf. Yeah. Um, but because command doesn't really take effect properly until his turn, if you were to go to the wolf, you'd either have still have to take the attack of opportunity, I would have thought. That's right. I will go to the large person then, uh, yeah. kind of just squaring up to him um, and trying to take some of the heat off Johan and then by sure. proxy. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we'll get like a domino effect. That's me. I'm sorry that was a very long turn. No, no, not at all, not at all. Okay, a very successful turn as well, I think. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, So we then have um, the goblin that is engaged with Saga at this point. 
Um, Saga, essentially, you've been left to fend for yourself whilst everybody goes to help Sergei. That's fine. Um, I'm Armin. So, uh, this goblin, at the moment, yet untouched as well. Um, so, he's going to swing his scimitar at you. Uh, pff, nine against your AC. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, after swinging his scimitar at you and, and you just ducking out of the way, um, he's actually going to utilise his nimble escape and disengage from you and head back towards where the hole in the ground is to get around by where the wolf is. So he's kind of teaming up with the wolf oh, no. a little bit. Okay. So he's kind of like gone, <laughs> screw this, yeah. and just gone <laughs> to help everybody else on Does... his side. Does he pass? I know he's disengaged from Saga, but does he yeah. pass any of us? Uh, no, because the That's position, right. the positioning of where you are is much more central to the room, That's whereas fair. he's down by the southern wall, so he's kind of taken the long way cool. around to get round. Um, okay, uh, so Sergey, then. Okay, here we you go. Are up. You so are currently prone, so you're going to need to take, I believe, your move action to stand up. Oh, it's all right. I'm not standing up. I would like to uh, <laughs> grab the wolf by the head, right. lean in a little bit closer, and then uh, my eyes kind of start to darken, and as I start to talk, my words kind of sound more like the sea, the waves on the sea, and uh, like a siren's voice as I cast a dissonant whispers onto that son of a bitch. Ooh, okay. It's Put a me through wisdom, whispers. So it's a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Uh, it will be 12. I don't want to do this in Sergei's voice. On a failed <laughs> save, it takes 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. Nice. Uh, wow. on, a failed, on a failed save, it only takes half as much damage and doesn't have to move away. Well, uh, you'll be pleased to know that he rolled a 4 on the save. <laughs> so, damage-wise, that is... Uh, 14 hit points of damage. Oh! Okay. So, um, as you cast this Dissonant Whispers, you see it kind of start twitching a little bit. And it, it uh, in reaction to your dark, whispery words, it, um, it kind of pulls off of you and runs and literally sh runs as fast as it can directly into a wall and just snaps its neck. <gasps> and then could I use my move to stand up and just kind of brush myself down? <laughs> yes. Oh, no, he's been dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Johan. Don't mind me. What? What? What was... <laughs> What did you do? I made a friend. <laughs> Saga, you're up. <laughs> Big half a Okay, minute. so I'm going to engage. Uh, you have not essentially Clark. now the closest thing to you is Clark, which he's about yeah, 10 I'm feet gonna... away from you. Yes. Yeah, so the I'm only gonna... other foe is the goblin at the other end of the room that you were just engaged with. I'm going to go to Clark. Okay, awesome. Okay, so you, you yeah, get in his, get up in his grill. Yes, I will. And <laughs> he's get, getting to taste my great sword. Woo. Well, twelve. So you you uh, head towards him, take a swing with your great sword, and he just blocks it with his shield. Ah, oh. uh. damn it! I'm afraid. Okay. Freak. Anything else you'd like to... I suppose there isn't anything, is there? It's just actions. Anything. No bonus actions. Damn. Okay, so now we have uh, the nondescript <laughs> larger goblinoid, <laughs> a.k.a. Clark. Um, he's pretty much engaged with everyone at this point. You've pretty much got him surrounded. Uh, so... Advantage. He is... Who's he gonna strike at? Well, we we actually know what he's going to do, Wayne. Uh, if you remember. Oh yes. 
Thank you for reminding me. Just, just going to stop you there before you start. <laughs> yes, before thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for reminding me because I definitely had forgotten about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> okay, so he quite literally then just kneels to the ground and then just mm. kind of lies on his back, <laughs> almost, almost in a daze. Um, as you surround him. He's tired, he wants to sleep. <laughs> wow. Well, he'll sleep all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that brings us then to Johan. Uh, you, you watch in amazement as this bugbear just lies down in front of everyone, not this putting up strange. any fight at all. This is a strange, strange day. <laughs> Just watched a wolf, like, smack its own neck against the wall, and now the thing I just stabbed is having a lie down. I think Johan assumes it's because of his stabbing, and he feels really proud and like, yeah, you lie down. <laughs> yeah, lie down. Okay. Um, you have uh, So you have got Clark lying down in front of you. About ten feet away to your right, there is still a, a goblin very much, like, ready to strike. It, does Clark look asleep or just prone? Just prone. He's just lying down, as I say, seemingly in a daze. He's very much awake, but it, the, it looks like the lights are on, but no one's home at this point. Hmm. I, my first thought was to stab him in the knee. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a dagger and... In fact, I'm going to do something that I haven't done yet, a la James style, and do something that I didn't know I had. <laughs> which is two weapon fighting. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stab his knee with two daggers. Sure. Talk uh, me through two weapon fighting. It's been a while since I've... So... I'm pretty sure you just don't add your modifier to the second dice. You would be right, sir. Yeah. yeah. So... At advantage because he's prone, sorry. Yes, at advantage because he's <laughs> prone. Thank you. So... 17 plus 5 is 22. And another 17 plus 5, which is also 22. Oh, so that, well, they're definitely both hitting. Natural 20. <gasps> natural 1. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Hang on. It just... So I'm, I'm slightly confused because there were a lot of die rolls there. So I rolled, four, I rolled D24 oh, that's times. Right. Two, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Yep. Yeah. So, so you're rolling with advantage on both, so what were your two dice rolls? Um, the first two dice rolls were both 17s, plus 5 is 22. The third roll was natural 20. So we take the natural 20 on that. So you've got a successful hit on your first attack, which is your cool. main attack, and then you've got a critical hit on the second attack, which is the one you don't do your modifiers for. Does it count as a sneak attack? You can include it as a sneak attack, yes, because you have advantage. This is where Weird. this is where rogues kick bum. Stabbing people in the knee <laughs> <laughs> while they cannot fight back. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. pretty much. <laughs> okay, so it's one really d four plus three, six plus another d six is one. So that's seven, and then one d four on its own, which is. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, so your sneak that's... attack will only apply to one damage roll, I believe. Because Fair it's enough. A, it's a, your sneak attack is, is a bonus action, if I remember rightly. Yes, is that it correct? is. correct? Yeah. Mm. So you get a bonus action. So, yeah, so you it's one lot of sneak attack damage on top of whatever you roll for the others. Yeah. Sweet. So that one dagger does six damage. Sorry, seven damage. Yeah. The, uh, and then the other dagger does four. Okay, plus then your sneak attack damage? That is plus my sneak attack damage. Oh, okay, sure. Hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, uh, you, you, you see the bugbear lying on the floor, and you just go hell for leather. Stab, <laughs> stab, stab! <laughs> and it's, and it's, uh, at its leg, for, for whatever reason. Um, it's looking pretty, pretty hurt, but it's still very much alive and kicking. Was that already <laughs> doubled for the nat twenty, Ollie? It doesn't. It didn't sound I, like enough damage to me. I must admit. Did you double the? Did you do 
two d4 for the critical hit that you got. I did not. I'll roll so another roll d4. another d4 then. Thank you, thank you, Isaac, because it didn't sound good right to me either. That's <laughs> oh, <just> another one. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. It's it's one. You know, Break the one skin. hit point closer to death. And then I slap him. <laughs> <laughs> just a good measure. <laughs> and I happy slap him. <laughs> Uh, so, Thoric, uh, you've just seen uh, this bugbear lie on the ground in submission, as commanded, and you see Johan take the full opportunity to uh, unleash all of his stress on its leg. Um, cool. you, there is still, from where you are, he's very much, uh, the bugbear is very much in front of you. You've got Johan and Sergei behind him, Saga to your left, and behind all of them, You've got uh, a goblin still alive. The goblin and can. The goblin can go do his thing. I'm just gonna bring the hammer down um, <laughs> onto not Clark uh, with advantage because he's still pro. Yeah, with advantage. Yep. Yeah. Hooray! This was my plan all along. Um, that is a oh actions. A uh, 16 to hit. Just about hits. Oh. Just about. I will take just about. <laughs> <laughs> For, oh, that's another seven on the die. Uh, that is nine points of bludgeoning damage. How are you finishing him, sir? No! <laughs> my, my camera <laughs> fell off because I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um... I am just bringing it straight down on his chest, just like Ooh. I'm imagining he like tries to bring it up to bring his shield up to protect himself. I just sweep that aside with my shield and just crush his uh, crush his chest. Okay, nice. He just caves in under the weight of your hammer. Oof, gross. And you just see the the life just kind of go out of his eyes. His already misty eyes from your command spell. Uh, so, um, you still have a goblin to deal with, however, um, and it is his go. Unless you want to do anything else, sorry, you could still move. Can I, just, can I just run towards the goblin? Yeah, yeah, you can do, yeah. My full movement, wherever that gets sure. me. Yeah, yeah, you, it's not even that far, it's about 15 feet away from where you are. So. I just close the distance at him. Awesome. Okay, in which case then, uh, his immediate reaction would be to um, try and attack you with his scimitar Forget. Uh, and that's going to be 13 against your AC doesn't hit now you've got really high AC haven't you I do uh, I think it's like 18 or something if I remember if it I recall. is indeed Oof. mean 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 uh, <laughs> okay um, in which case then um, he is much as before, going to use his nimble escape no! <laughs> to disengage, and he's going to run back towards the uh, the cave with the two pools in it, mm. and down the steps, and try and get as far as he can. He's used an action, so he can't get too far, but you do see him kind of run around a corner <laughs> out of sight from where you are. I thought he was getting really frustrated. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, which then brings us to you, Sergey. So you, you've You've seen this bugbear just get absolutely mullered by Johan and, and Thoric. Um, and then you see this goblin just leg it out of the room. What would you like to do? Could I still see the goblin? Uh, from where you are, I would say no. Can I run after it so I can see the goblin? You certainly can. Good luck, Peter. Uh, um. You would have to, you can get within 10 feet of it without dashing. That's okay. That's as far as I need to get. I okay. just need to see the, the slippery little fellow. Okay. And see then I would like to, uh, in Sergei fashion, I'm really enjoying this cantonip, uh, cast Vicious Mockery. You never saw it coming. <laughs> uh, and say, uh, well, you can run, but you cannot hide. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so it's a wisdom saving throw again, yeah? That's correct, yes. Okay. That is going to be a... Four. Uh, that fails, so it will take one hit point of damage <laughs> uh, and have disadvantage on next attack. 
Okay. This is healthy for him. Doing the wrong, right thing. There we go. Okay. So yeah, you you see it kind of like <laughs> as it's running, kind of look back at you, <laughs> pained <laughs> by your horrible words. Um, Hopefully, it has a mild headache. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? I suppose it's probably you done, though. Yeah, that's probably me done, yeah. Okay, Saga, then. Uh, okay. So you've seen this other goblin run out the room. You've seen Sergei go after it. Meanwhile, there's the corpse of this bugbear at your feet. What would you like to do? Mm. I can't see the goblin running, can I? Can I try uh, and get a go. crossbow shot at it? Uh, you'd have to head really to the top of the steps, the cave mouth, but you could do that. Yes, I'm yeah, do that. Okay, so you head to the top of the the steps leading mm -hmm. into the room. Um, you can see him; he's about fifteen feet away from you. Yeah, you, you've moved twenty, so you wouldn't be able to close the gap without dashing. I get thirty feet. Don't I? I get thirty uh, feet. Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> That was bad mental maths on my part then. Really bad mental maths. Five times table is so easy. <laughs> so uh, yeah. am I within melee range then? Uh, you can get within melee range if you'd like. Yes. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, and then presumably you're going for it. Yes. Okay. I am tired. 14. 14 is going to miss just about. Oh. Oh. No. One point off, I'm afraid. Damn. That's annoying. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Saga. Sorry. Uh, that brings us to the top of the round then. Johan. You've seen Saga and Sergei just leg it out of the room after Thoric finished off Clark. What would you like to do? Just kind of enjoying the afterglow for a minute of killing something big. Um, then I, I might, before I run after it, can I take a quick look around, like a, just a glance back at those crates and mm -hmm. see if I notice anything about them before I run after the goblin? Uh, with a quick look, I would say the thing that you notice that stands out to you is the blue lion symbol um, that's painted on some of the crates. Am I able to do a quick perception check before I run, or would that uh, be too much of an action? I mean, you could take it as an action if you wanted to do an active perception check. Yeah. Sure. It's a six plus three, nine. Rubbish. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're even actively looking at this point, that seems to be the only thing that stands out to you. No, then I just run after the goblin okay sure so you're just closing the gap maybe give clark a little kick just to make doubly sure <laughs> uh, not, so like, not to hurt him but just just to make sure he's dead and sure. then yeah, then run after the the body flops in response to your kick mm. it looks very dead um so you managed to close the gap between this goblin as well so you're kind of side by side with saga at this point um, engage with this other goblin that is attempting to flee. Miss. Uh, okay, so then that would mean Thoric, I believe. Cool. You're up next, because, yeah, that was your action for the active perception check. Yeah. Awesome. Thoric. And Thoric's like, just calls out to the others, I think you lot have got that goblin wrapped up. I'm just going to have a look at the hole. Um, and, true to his word, he will take his illuminated shield, kind of stacking himself behind it as he's been taught from his dwarven forebears. Uh -huh. uh, he will approach the hole and look in. Okay. Um, so this hole is essentially a, a shaft which drops, a, from your estimation, about 30 feet down um, into another cave. Is it a slope, sorry? Uh, it is... Or is it quite steep? It's it's somewhat of a natural chimney, in a way. Okay. Is probably the best way to describe it. So it's very, it's quite vertical. Okay. Um. Yeah. 
Is there a stone by my feet, or like, is there just something to hand, like a, a discarded helmet or a? Um... There's some pebbles and things on the floor. Nothing, nothing particularly sizable from where you're stood, because the crates are on the other side of the room. Um, I just want to pick up a, um, if this is big enough to allow, uh, yeah, this is no larger than 10 feet in any dimension. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a pebble yep. uh, and cast light on it. Okay. And drop it into the hole. Okay. Um, so you cast light on this stone. Which um, ends it on my shield. Uh, yes. Uh, so you cast light on this stone and you chuck it down. And um, as it falls down the the hole, you do hear from the bottom of the, uh, the hole, the chimney or whatever you want to call it, um, the sounds of um, frenzied kind of wolves biting and, and clawing in reaction to the stone falling down. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just like, ah, ah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. And that's uh, it. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, what, did, what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Uh, so that brings us then back to this goblin who is very much engaged now with um, Saga and well, these wolves are really going for it, aren't they? Mm. Um, engaged with Saga and Johan. Um, he's going to take a swipe at one of you. Mm, which one? Johan? Uh, ooh, 20 against your AC, non-natural. Uh, that just about hits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be five slashing damage at you, sir. Okie dokie. Um, as it, so it just swings at you in desperation um, and manages to land the hit, um, piercing your armor and, uh, and cutting at the skin. Uh, lucky you. Uh, you he is also, much like before, uh, going to use his nimble escape to disengage as a bonus action. And he's going to run, not for the corridor that you came from, or the staircase that you came from, from stream side, but he's going to head down that other um, western passage, which you haven't yet been down. And you see him kind of run out of view. I look at Saga. Should we follow him? Yes. There'll just be more of them. Mm. Fine. We need the dwarf. Okay. Sergey, you are up. Um, do you want me to go get Thoric? Um, yes, please. Okay. Um... So the, that Western Passage is the only one we've not gone down yet, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Okay, so feeling pretty assured that there's probably going to be more of them that way, so now's a good time to regroup. I'll go uh, collect Thoric while also... Can I do an investigation on those crates while I'm in there? Sure thing. So we'll use that as your action, yeah? Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, give us an investigation can... check. Try them open or anything. <laughs> That's a nat one, for fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> um, your investigation uh, really only produces the knowledge that there are things in these crates. Um, there are things you've in You've these not crates. yet managed to crack any of them open. I'll get to that later. Uh, Thoric, uh, we're all regrouping and then going down another passageway. There are some wolves down this bloody chimney, mate. Um, I don't know what we want to do about them. Are you all in agreement that you want to regroup? In which case I can end the initiative order. Or yeah. do some of you still want to pursue? I think we could take a minute yes, and really have a proper I... look at these crates. 
I think. Okay, awesome. So you um, you all head back into the room then, and you uh, just take a minute to to regroup, which is of course what we shall do. Okay.